Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's our 2007 Chevrolet. It's a half ton. It's got the big 4.8 and the engine lights on. The big 4.8. Don't know why GM made the 4.8. We'll skip that thought. Uh, let her go through a system scan. We're going to hit report here. Uh, let's see here. We have. Lo and behold, EVAP leaks, a small EVAP leak and a large EVAP leak. So we have both left front speed sensor and some more in the audio. So let's just hop right in here. We're going to go to the PCM. And let's just first of all see if we hear the canister vent valve. It's not in this menu. It must be in this menu. Let's just hear if we can hear it clicking. I don't hear it snapping back, even though Josh is making noise over there. Usually these are pretty noticeable. I don't hear it. Let's, uh, oops. We're going to have to go down on this old girl and see what uh, what's going on in there. Is our fuel tank sensor working? Fuel level sensors looks like that's pooched. Um, fuel pressure should be good. Or fuel tank, 1.5 is usually atmospheric pressure. Oh, fuel level sensor rear tank. That's why that one looks screwy. Okay, that one's correct. Um, well, this is all in Canadian. That's weird. Their settings screwed up here. Anyhow, let's uh, let's get this truck up in the air. Because we're not rookies, we know that before we pick up any vehicle on the lift, a put a battery charger on it or maintainer, which we already did. And B, it's probably going to be pretty rusty underneath, so we're going to need a good power and a ground source, potentially. So we're going to hook a power probe up so we have that underneath. There we go. All right, there she is. So here's the canister vent valve. You see it's been changed before. You see all these clamps here. Well, all three of them are rusted off it, so it's kind of interesting. So it's been back on here a while. Somebody's replaced it. That's definitely aftermarket. Now I got the scan tool here, so let's listen. Yeah, so I'm clicking it on and off. I definitely don't hear it clicking. So I like to try that before I touch it. What the heck? Oh, that's a brake line. Oh, that's the easy way to do it, fella. Uh, so let's unplug this. I was going to say I don't like uh, touching them before I click them on and off because sometimes touching them fixes them. What's up, Mrs. O? Would there be any benefit of changing the thermostat when you flush the heater core? On which vehicle? What type of vehicle? Uh, 17 Ram. 17 Ram? I mean, I, I can. Okay. Yeah. Nick, we have Mrs. O all squared away. Uh, we got this unplugged. So what we should have back here in the GM, we should have full-time power on one of these wires. I think the pink one or the orange one there. And we do. And then the other wire here is going to be our control wire. And when we turn it on, currently it is turned off, when we turn it on, the computer should pull that to ground. Now the power probe here actually has a test for that. We could just use a test light. Power probe calls it the driver test, I believe it is. So we'll hit enter. And let's see, it's going to put a small load on this wire. So it has right now currently at the tip 13.76 volts because we have our maintainer on it. So we're going to put that on the control wire. And then I'm going to use the scan tool and turn it on. Turn it back off. So that tells us that our circuit is intact. Now, if you don't have a power probe, you can just use a quarter amp uh, test light. Let me show you. This is going to be your classic 194 bulb. We're going to probe it in there. We're going to probe it in there. And this is going to make sure our whole circuit can carry current, which it should. We'll turn it on. We can see it comes on. And then we turn it off. So super duper easy. Our canister vent valve is garbage. Super common problem on a GM. Before we do any other EVAP leak testing or any other EVAP testing, we need a functioning canister vent valve. This one clearly you know, doesn't work. Looks like it's been on a while. I'm gonna get a new one. Uh, probably when we take off, we probably will see where it's split open. Usually these things get moisture in them and they actually physically crack open here on the solenoid. So uh, pretty common. Let me get a new one. Then we'll see if the system can actually seal and purge. Our friends at Napper showed up. They brought us the new 
canister vent valve so we can proceed to take this one off. The good news is we don't need a screwdriver or a nut driver to take the clamps off here. As they've just rusted away. However, we do need to be careful of the brake line. Uh, typically, you don't need to be careful of the brake line. Because as a general rule, it's not right here. Now, is this nine cap? Before we go yank it, it is not nine cap. This is just the old fashioned green stuff. And we'll very gingerly move that out of our way. They've got it fastened over there quite well, so we're not even going to bother zip tying it back to this canister vent valve. We're just going to move some of this stuff. One good thing about New York cars, you don't need a lot of tools. Just a good kick and hammer, get the rust out of the way. Oh look at that, it's not even fastened to the tank, even better. Let's see, this is the vent side, the fresh air side. This is the bell, or the... On the other end of this hose, oh, gosh, I'm being a wisp. I've been off for a week, folks, give me a break. We took a little time off around Christmas and New Year's. Can you say Christmas? I think so. I think you can. You mother walker, what happened to me? Did I grow a vagina? That's probably more offensive than saying Christmas. Holy cannoli. Woo! Better check my pocket. Oh, crap. This <sighs> oh, it looks like they might have used a piece of garden hose. Why am I out of breath? This looks like garden hose of some sort. Yeah, pretty sure he's stiff. It's green. Inside of it's all chowdered up. Shoo wee! <laughs> Let's open up your new one. Uh, it's your classic 2282614 from Napa, right from mainland. Oh, made in USA it says, wow. I was gonna say it's right from the mainland, but it's actually American. Here's our new one. As a general rule, these go on the tank. Like so. What's up, Mrs. O? Oh, nothing. I just said something offensive on YouTube. Oh, boy. Do you want to repeat it, or? Put that on there. Huh? Uh, I better not. It was kind of a sexist. Oh, wow. If you know what I'm saying. So well, actually, I said the word Christmas, first of all. Oh, dear. And then I said something sexist because I wasn't thinking. You know how you tell me think before you speak? Or was that my mother that used to say that? <laughs> I'm sure we both told you that. You probably both have said that a time or two. Uh -huh. Do you ever think before you speak? All right, we need to go get a little piece of rubber hose. And we'll come back and talk more about Christmas. Chop this off a piece of hose. Stick that on there. I got us some new hose clamps too. They're here and here. So as it, when this uh, was stopped, now this would have had the tube molded right to the vent valve. Vent valve would have been one of them big ones with the filter in it. And GM came out with this bulletin a long time ago that you, you know, you chop it off. You had this new valve and you take and put a piece of hose on it and you run it way up above the transmission and you put this remote filter kit on it and all that stuff. Uh, if, you're, if you live in the Northeast and or any part of the Americas and or any part of the world that is considered the salt belt, uh, don't, don't waste your time doing that because that's all it is, is a giant waste of time. If you take your time to run this up above the tranny 
and put the remote filter relocation kit, it still doesn't work. Uh, they, these things will still fail within a year or two, so don't uh, you know? Don't bother running that all the way up there under the hood and all that stuff. It's just a waste of 20 feet of theater hose. <laughs> we'll find out where the, the person ran this one. Sometimes people just stuff them up in the frame rail. It, it really doesn't matter. Usually I just mount the filter back here because it really doesn't matter. that let's see where they ran that hose baby it goes up there whoa man down hold on folks so there's the hose right there oh maybe they did run it the whole way they're going all the way oh nope they ended it right there so that's this little block right there so like i say it doesn't it doesn't matter where you put it the uh, bed metal still goes bad all the time Sorry about the noise, folks. Uh, it's pretty chilly today, so I've got the furnace on, obviously. And it's really bizarre because in real life, IRL, as my kids will say, the furnace is not loud. It's actually quite a quiet furnace. But on the YouTube videos, it's like this. The whole time in the background, but frankly, I don't want to be cold. On this side of the uh, canister vent valve, you can choose to put a clamp on it, which really doesn't matter. This is the fresh air side. This is the canister side. Now this side does have to be sealed up tight, like a tiger, because this is the one that goes to the perch side, um, or the canister side. This side has to be tight. This side, if you got a little leaky, it doesn't matter. That's not gonna leak anyways. You've seen how hard it's stuck to those barbs. Let's go get the scan tool. Let's make sure this thing clicks. She's clicking now. Hopefully you guys can hear it as I turn it on and off with the scan tool here. All right, so that's good. Uh, because it clicks, we know it's good. That's false, I tried to trick you. However, our furnace can help us at this point. We're just griping about the noisy furnace, or at least I was. What we can do is we can seal the system now. Click, you just heard it click. Now technically, with the furnace being on, we should start to see an increase in pressure if there is no leak in the system. And we can see immediately it's popping up already. Our fuel tank uh, pressure sensor voltage is going down. Pressure is going up because this is just like uh, having a gas can in the back of your truck in the middle of summer. And uh, let's say you put it in there at nighttime and you know you had it all sealed off. You come out in the morning because you slept in and you're hung over and you go out there and this thing's blown up the size of a balloon and you got to reach over and open it up. Well, it's the same thing. We've got this thing inside. We're not hung over, but we sealed off the entire tank by shutting off the canister vent valve. The purge solenoid is closed, so therefore our tank with our furnace on is heating up and starting to expand and starting to build pressure, albeit very, very minute amount of pressure we can confidently say that this system is sealed and it likely does not even have a small leak. So when I open this, this should go back to atmospheric pressure, right? Bada bing, bada boom, look at that, we're done. So hopefully that makes sense to all you folks. Uh, I think it does, a lot of times when you explain it about the, uh, you know, the gas can, because we've all done that, you know, you've had the gas can in the cold and whoosh, you know, the side sucking on it and then you know, out in the heat the thing's puffed up like a balloon. And there you go. And that's very similar way to uh, explain how cars that use NVLD systems, so natural vacuum leak detection, that's what they do. They are dependent on changes in our climate, you know, the hot and the cold. And that's when they run their very small EVAP leak tests. Typically, that's how they'll run them, is just natural vacuum. Can this thing, does it go into a natural vacuum? So uh, Chrysler is huge on that. Um, Ford does that. There's several manufacturers that use the NVLD system. So this one does not, but you can still do it with the scan tool. Because if we, let's say for example, we close that canister vent off and nothing changed. You know, that fuel tank pressure just sat at, you know, 0.08 millimeters of mercury. Never moved. Well, at that point we either have a bad fuel tank pressure sensor or we got a big old leak. And then in which case we would close it, close the vent, and then we would put a smoke machine on it and say, hey, you know, where's the leak? Or at least that's one approach you could use. So 
Uh, that's that. This tells me our system is sealed. The only thing I need to check now uh, when I set it down before I pull it out is I'll open and close the purge valve to make sure it works. We know it's closed, but can it open? So, because the light's been on in this truck for about six months, he told me. So, that's that. And what I'm going to tell you is to go into that comment section, leave your questions, your comments, your concerns. Find us on the Insta and the Facebook. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.